Hello there, human beings. Here's another shirt that I got from my friend uh, Franz Kummer, who passed away in Germany. Sorry for all those noises. I am not having gas. It is just the chair squeaking and scrooching and making, I don't know what kind of noise you call that. So I got a question the other day, and I'm going to read part of it to you. Here it goes. I started reading I Am That after you mentioned it on one of your videos. Uh, one of the things I find most striking in the book is the parts that sound like solipsism. Uh, sometimes he talks like we should think that only I exist and the rest of the world I inhabit, including the people in it, are just a creation of my imagination. So if I took that fully seriously, then even Nisargadatta Maharaj or Brad Warner are just things I imagined and took to be external to myself uh, to help me discover truths that I already know within myself. If you're looking for topics for a video or blog, I'd be grateful if you can talk about this stuff. So, yeah, that is a good question. Solipsism. I am familiar with the word solipsism. I was a, a philosophy major for exactly a semester. I, I was in college, and, you know, all this stuff is going on. This is before I met Tim McCarthy and started doing Zen practice with him. And I thought, well, philosophy, that's the thing I want to study, you know, because I'm interested in life, the universe, and everything, and understanding what it's all about. And, so on and so forth. One semester of philosophy uh, convinced me that philosophy was not the way to go if I wanted to figure that out. And one uh, day of Zen class uh, helped me understand that Zen was the way to go if I wanted to, to figure that out. So uh, I'm passingly familiar with uh, certain philosophical terms, having, you know, and, and, and the reading I've done. Solipsism, though, I went on Wikipedia, and I'm not even going to try. Well, the, well, you know what? There is no try, only do. I am going to try. Uh, reading you Wikipedia's definition of solipsism, and sorry if my eye line is going weird because I'm looking at the same screen that I'm using to uh, record this. Anyway, they say solipsism from Latin solus alone and ipse self is the philosophical idea that only one's mind is sure to exist as an epistemological position, solipsism holds that knowledge of anything outside one's mind is unsure. The external world and other minds cannot be known and might not exist outside the mind. And uh, it goes on a, a, a lot um, and gets into idealism. And when I read that section of the Wikipedia article, I found that I'm not sure if I even understand the distinction between idealism and solipsism. Uh, it's, uh, you know, you can try to explain it to me in the comments if you want, but I probably still won't understand it. So let me see what I can tell you about what I understand. Now, I don't want to comment too extensively on Nisargadatta Maharaj, although I did bring I Am That out with me uh, to show you. I do really like this book. And I haven't read anything, I hate double negatives, I was going to say I haven't read anything by Nisargadatta Maharaj that I haven't liked, but let me undouble negative it and say I have read, um, I have enjoyed everything that I've read by Nisargadatta Maharaj. I've, I've got now, I don't know, a little stack of Nisargadatta Maharaj books that I've bought over the past few months. And uh, I like them all. Uh, he's an interesting fellow. Interesting in that philosophically what he talks about sounds to me remarkably like Dogen. Uh, and like some other people, like um, uh, what's his face? Uh, uh, Huang Po, who I, I brought out. A, a, this contains one of Huang Po's writings in there. Uh, it sounds like Huang Po, it sounds a little bit like Koto Sawaki. But he's coming from a different tradition. Now, it's not a vastly different tradition because the Advaita Vedanta tradition and Buddhism are kind of related. Although the historians are debating, you know, uh, furiously over how related they are. A lot of people see the Advaita Vedanta tradition as being a form of Hinduism that borrows concepts from Buddhism and then reframes them in other words and presents them as a kind of Hindu philosophy. Uh, that could be the case historically, uh, or it could be that the two streams kind of emerged uh, from a similar sorts of experiences that people were having. That's what I think is more likely. So when I read Nisargadatta Maharaj, I, I feel like I'm reading a guy who's coming from some of the same sorts of experiential 
happenings, experiences. If, you know, these things aren't exactly experiences, but let's call them experiences. He's coming from the same sorts of experiences that lots of us in the Zen tradition have, and he has obviously gone very deeply into that, and he's come back with a, a philosophical outlook that is quite similar. So I wanted to read to you a few quotes from Dogen, which I think might illustrate why I don't think Dogen is solipsism. And since I already said that I think Nisargadatta Maharaj is philosophically very close to Dogen, it would go for him too, but his sort of expression is different. And I, I don't know enough about the words he used, you know, I don't know what language, I do, I, I've read, what language do you speak, Mar Marathi? Some, some Indian language that I'd never heard of before I started reading his books. Um, so I don't know anything about that language, but I do know something about Japanese, and so I can talk about how Dogen dealt with this idea. How's that? So, in Shobo Genzo, he uses two different words that are often translated as self. And the distinction is important, I think. Uh, he uses the word jiko, and he uses the word ware, uh, which is also sometimes represented by a Chinese character that's often pronounced waga. So when he's using jiko, some translators will translate that as self with a capital S, and when he's using ware, some translators will translate that as self with a small s. Ware would be the personal individualized self, and Jiko is, if you looked in a Japanese English dictionary, you would find it translated simply as self, but in Dogen's usage, Jiko is something much bigger. And in fact, when, let's see, I brought out another visual aid, when Kosho Uchiyama wrote about uh, Dogen and, and about some of Kota Suwaki's philosophy in English, uh, he liked to keep the word Jiko with, untranslated. Um, even though it's just a very common word in Japanese for self. So let me read to you a couple of quotations so and see where we get with this. This is uh, from Genjo Koan, one of Dogen's most famous pieces of writing. To learn the Buddhist truth is to learn ourselves, Jiko. Sometimes it is uh, translated as the self, and even though I'm reading my teacher's translation, which he says ourselves, I think a better translation is the self because there's no our co corresponding in the Japanese. It just says to learn jiko, to learn self. So, but I'll just read Nishijima Roshi's translation as it is. Uh, to, to learn the Buddhist truth is to learn ourselves, jiko. To learn ourselves is to forget ourselves. Again, always jiko. To forget ourselves, jiko again, is to be experienced by the myriad dharmas. To be experienced by the myriad dharmas is to let our own, and that own is also a translation of jiko, body and mind, and the body and mind of the external world fall away. There is a state in which the traces of realization are forgotten, and it manifests the traces of forgotten realization for a long, long time. One of my favorite quotes from Dogen. Often, though, as I said, it's uh, phrased to study the Buddhist. To study the Buddhist truth is to study the self. Anyway, here's another bit from later on in Genjo Koan. This is also Jiko. Driving ourselves, Jiko, to practice and experience the myriad dharmas, that's everything, that the sort of the outside, what you usually think of as the outside world, to experience the myriad dharmas is delusion. When the myriad dharmas actively practice and experience ourselves, that's again Jiko, that is the state of realization. So uh, to, to think of yourself as a subject experiencing the object of the universe is a mistake, but letting the universe experience you is the true, uh, what does he say, the state of realization. So that is important. Uh, so when we're talking about solipsism, to me solipsism is about what Dogen, uh, when he uses the word ware or waga, uh, and uh, not jiko. So solipsism would be like I, my ware, my individual ego self, experiences the universe, and uh, what he's talking about is the universe experiences me. Okay? So let's give you an example of when he uses ware. If we become familiar, this is also from Genjo Koan, 
If we become familiar with action and come back to this concrete place, the truth is evident that the myriad dharmas are not self. And when he says self there, he's saying what it, that individual ego self, me. Uh, so even though he said the universe is ourselves, he's saying it is not self. And here's another example. This is also from Genjo Koan. When the myriad dharmas are each not the self, that's Ware again, there is no delusion and no realization, no Buddhas and no ordinary beings, no life and no death. So there you go. And just to get back, I'll give you another example of Jiko. This is from Kankin, which is, means reading the sutras. I, I liked this one. The practice and experience of Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, that's complete, perfect enlightenment, sometimes relies on good counselors and sometimes relies on the sutras. So sometimes you get it from a teacher in person and sometimes you get it from reading. Good counselors means Buddhist patriarchs. Uh, Nishijima Roshi used the word patriarchs. It doesn't have to be a male, so usually people say ancestors, but I'm just going to read it the way he wrote it. But I'd probably prefer him to use ancestors, but he wrote patriarchs, so let's go with that. Buddhist patriarchs who are totally themselves. And when he says totally themselves, that's Zenjiko. And Zen is not the Zen as in Zazen. There's another word pronounced like Zen, which means all, everything. So total, our total self. Buddhist, Buddhist ancestors, Buddhist teachers who are total self. Sutras means sutras that are totally themselves. Again, Zen Jiko. Because the self, Jiko, is totally a Buddhist ancestor, and because the self, Jiko, again, is totally a sutra, it is like this. Even though we call it self, Jiko, it is not restricted by me and you. And when he says me and you, he's using uh, an old, an old uh, Japanese word that I probably won't even be able to put up on the screen. Uh, so if it's not up on the screen, don't blame me. It's probably just not in the, the program I'm using, but it's uh, Nanji. But again, the first character of that is the same uh, waga, uh, ware, me. So even though we call it self, it is not restricted by me and you is probably a good translation. And then he says it is vivid eyes and a vivid fist. And just to add another layer of confusion to everybody who's already confused, here's some quotes from Kodos. What are you barking at, Ziggy? That helicopter? I know. I don't know what it's doing. Oh no, you're barking because you want to get a snack from your, uh, from, my, from my wife's mom who lives next door and always gives him snacks. Here's what Koto Sawaki said, and I don't have the translations for this, so I can't tell you what he's using as the word self, but I'm going to say probably again Jiko. Zazen does not teach one to win over others. You become yourself completely. Zazen is only about you. And here's a longer quote that I think is good. I am an advocate of Zen Master Dogen's teaching and have been for tens of years. I give talks about it and have been actualizing it in practice. This knowing the self, he's putting a, a the translator puts a, a capital S, so I'm going to assume he's saying Jiko. This knowing the self is beyond verbal explanation. It is beyond words and must be practiced. If I were to try to express this self, again capital S, uh, that is beyond words, I would have to say the self that selfs itself. It sounds a little dirty, but that's kind of it. The self that selfs itself. That was one of uh, one of Kodosawaki's favorite phrases, and I wish I knew the translation, or I wish I knew what uh, was being translated, that, but I, I could probably uh, look it up uh, for you and tell you in a later video. But that's the deal. So solipsism is the view that y you, me is the only thing in the universe the only thing reliable in the universe is me and my experiences uh, and it's sort of that brain in a jar sort of idea I, I mentioned it in hardcore zen that i i'd read uh, something you know maybe i'd seen some dumb science fiction movie on tv or something where where a brain was alive in a jar and was being fed experiences and didn't know and i remember thinking about that as a kid going how do i know i'm not a brain in a jar you know it's one of these uh, you know uh, stoner philosophical uh, questions well yeah i don't know i'm not a brain in a jar or the matrix you know the matrix is sort of the ultimate brain in a jar movie uh, with big budget special effects instead of just a plastic brain in a little glass jar uh, but it's the same idea of the brain in the jar uh, i don't know that but i i kind of have a faith that that's not the case uh, that i'm not a brain in a jar 
If I am, you know, and you're outside the jar watching this, tell me. But I don't think I am a brain in a jar. But that the world itself has a reality that is that is deeply connected to me so that the self I feel is witnessing the universe out there and the universe out there that I feel that this self is witnessing are actually two aspects of the same self. That is uh, the Buddhist view and the Buddhist view when the, when Buddhists talk about that they're not putting that forth as a philosophical speculation. It isn't that they sat there and went yeah, it might be uh, like that, or it might be, uh, I don't know. No, that isn't the way they're doing it. They've had, they've meditated, and they've had a certain degree of experience around that, and while trying to relate that experience to others, the best way to relate it is, well, maybe not the best way, but one of the common ways of relating it is to say that the self that I experience out there, I'm gesturing at the sky and the trees and things that you can't see on the screen, but, you know, I could gesture at the, what is that, the cooker and the, my uh, father-in-law likes to, barbecue on Sundays, so that's his, his barbecue equipment. And that's me. And so is my father-in-law. My father-in-law is actually me, but I don't know. We could talk to him about that. I'm trying to get his garage door fixed for him today. It's a hassle. <laughs> anyway, that's a whole other problem. Anyway, that is why Buddhism isn't solipsism, and I probably did not explain that at all, but <laughs> I, I hope you at least were entertained by the jokes. So, if you want to send money to me to be entertained by me some more, you can send it to the URL you're seeing on the screen below, and if you're listening on the podcast, that URL is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is my only way of making a living. That's the only thing that's paying me anymore these days, except for the occasionally uh, I get a tiny, tiny royalty check, but uh, but really you are my main means of support. You, just you out there. So I really appreciate what you do for me, but I'm offering this for free, so if you don't have the money or you don't feel like it or you just feel like this one wasn't worth it just don't send me any money that's fine but i enjoy the money you send me uh so thank you very much and it's more than just enjoyment it's how i buy my food and groceries and everything so we will see you next time have a good time all the time bye you guys should see what i see when i open that door that's what i see i think it's